Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to Session Denali-32. When last we visited the party, they had just been victorious over the giant captain and his first mate, albeit with serious injuries. The heart of the golem had been recovered from the loot, and the party assumed that the large humanoids had recovered it from the thief while on a raiding expedition. We returned to the group still in the cave, going through the remainder of the boxes and belongings. A low whistle escaped Yolanda Twoblade's lips as she looked over a piece of parchment. What do you have there? asked Brother Stance. The fighter continued to read the letter before answering the monk. It appears it is a letter from our mysterious Garmin. The rest of the group stopped their searching and gathered around the warrior, peppering her with questions. Exasperated, she ordered them to wait while she finished reading it. As their impatience grew, Yolanda wordlessly handed the document off and walked away. Harris, the mage, quickly scanned the document and also replied with a low whistle. A still wounded Omel, leaning against the cave wall, grew tired of waiting. Just tell us what the damn thing says and stop whistling, he exclaimed. Harris shook himself out of his stupor and addressed the group as Yolanda paced in the cave. Well, he started, it appears that the giants did not come to have the heart by accident. According to this letter, the courier slash thief was ordered to deliver the heart to this creature. According to the missive, the Garmin had stolen it and ferried it out of the city. The letter goes on to say that the Giants should contact their fleet to attack Saydown as the threat has been eliminated. A dramatic pause came and Harris, still in disbelief, uttered, The city is going to be attacked if these Giants get word back to their fleet. Stunned silence fell over the group and Grish spoke. Most of those people are defenseless. A Giant fleet would easily overrun the city without the Golem for protection. So many people, so much devastation. A scraping of armor against rock was heard, and the group noticed Sir Omel, Knight of Bacchus, struggling to his feet. <sighs> well, I can't let that happen. Let's get this heart back to the city, he said. A smile crossed the party's faces, but the wizard spoke up. I only sent the message yesterday to the captain. Denali is a big land, and it will take several days for him to arrive, if not longer. The knight muttered a strange chant, and his hands glowed with magical radiance as he placed them on his chest. A look of refreshed vigor appeared on his visage, and he took a deep breath. He looked at the giant skiff, and then to the Zenobian cleric. Feeling like getting some exercise? We should probably get going. Two days of grueling travel along the rocky coastline followed as the knight and the cleric rowed with all their might. Phidias sat near Stance and Harris, who assisted in rowing, as Yolanda was responsible for steering. Tell me again what it looked like. What did it smell like? Did it have sharp teeth? Could it really fly? What did the... But the diminutive gnome was interrupted by Brother Stance of the Verte Order. Would you just shut up about the gargoyle? The damn thing nearly killed us, and there was a lot more of than one from the sound of those damn wings. Why don't you examine the loot we grabbed before leaving? Try figuring out what that crystal stick does, or count the coins again, he said in an exasperated tone. Dejected, Phidias moved back to the craft where Yolanda was steering the boat away from the rocks. The road plopped down next to the female, and began to half-heartedly count coins from the partially torn bag. Yolanda felt sorry for him and spoke with him. Look, Phidias, those gargoyles were pretty bad. Anything with forearms would be. It was quite scary, and Grish has the scars on his back to prove it. 
We were all glad that you and Omel survived, but in your absence, things got really bad. Phidias looked up and thanked her. I'm sorry it was bad for you guys. We had an easy time of it and thought you guys had died in the collapse. I think Omel was holding on to his healing in the event we found you guys and you needed it. She smiled and looked at the big knight rowing with Grish. He is a nice man, she replied. A loud harumph exited the gnome's mouth. He's an idiot. We would have made much better time if he would have just healed himself instead of dragging his leg around like a gimp. Yolanda shook her head and looked towards the front of the boat again. Hey everyone, I see a ship. The group stopped rowing and stood up in the craft, which was easily supported their weight. Friend or foe? asked Stance. Phidias stood on the railing to get a better look and exclaimed that it was a friend in the form of the flying porpoise. I recognize the sails. A few minutes later, the Denali craft pulled alongside the heroes and tossed ropes over the edge. As the last of the booty was brought up by Grish, the captain addressed them. Looking at Harris, he poked his finger into the mage's chest and stated, Stay out of my head, wizard. It unnerves me. His mood softened as Grish leaned in to protect Harris. We needed help, and we didn't have a damn bird to send. Thank you for your prompt response, as he handed over a bag of gold. A huge smile crossed the captain's face, and an audible, Aww, was heard from Phidias. Sir Omel stepped up and spoke. Captain, we need to return to Saydown with all due speed. We fear the city may come under attack in the immediate future and need to warn the king. The captain shot a glance towards Grish, who responded immediately. No, you idiot. Not from my people. Where do you think we got this enormous craft? A look of fear crossed the captain's face. Giants? he asked. The party shook their heads in the affirmative, and he began to shout orders when a bell sounded from the crow's nest. Ships! yelled out the watchman, and everyone turned in the direction he was pointing. Oh, great, Yolanda said as she shook her head. The captain continued to shout orders, and the flying porpoise began to turn and head back along the edge of the island. Move fast, swabbies, or you'll be living with the fishies when the giants catch us, yelled out the captain. The well-trained crew quickly moved to their assigned posts, and wind filled the sails. For several hours the pursuit came, and it was obvious that the ships of the giants would try and catch the flying porpoise, so no advanced warning could be given to the city. We close out this episode now, and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast, and don't forget to follow us on Twitter, at the Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, thanks for listening.